the next module we are going to see in hepatobiliary pancreatic system is on gallbladder and biliary system okay so let me start with one important anatomy the usual question in exams this is liver this is a liver this is bile duct right duct left duct this is bile duct which is bile duct is 10 centimeter in length in which common hepatic duct is 2.5 common bile duct is 7.5 centimeters okay common bile duct is 7.5 centimeters diameter is 6 mm diameter the diameter of the bile duct is 6 mm okay so now if you see this 10 centimeter bile duct now what you are going to see here is I am going to show you the other parts of this anatomy this is the artery this is common hepatic artery this is coming up like this here and it divides into right hepatic artery it is going behind the bile duct and this is going into left side so this is left hepatic artery this is right hepatic artery this is a normal anatomy okay this is a normal anatomy and the post portal vein is seen posterior to these structures so this is a portal vein so you can see portal vein is seen posterior to these structures so in the portal triad in the portal triad if you see the three structures which are forming the portal triad are portal vein is seen posterior artery is seen to the right to, to the anterior to the left side bile duct is seen to the right side this is a anatomy of portal triad so this is a normal anatomy i want you to know one important triangle here now this is a cystic artery this is a cystic artery which is supplying the gallbladder and the this is a gallbladder let us assume this is a gallbladder so now you can see this is a cystic artery supplying the gallbladder so now i am going to erase you all the uh, uh, I am going to show you the clear anatomy of the Kellogg's triangle alone now. Please remember I am going to show you the anatomy of Kellogg's triangle alone here. I am removing the, all the other things. I am going to show you only the anatomy of Kellogg's triangle. So this is bile duct, this is cystic duct and this is gallbladder. Please remember this is gallbladder like this. This is cystic duct and this is gallbladder like this. And this triangle bounded by, this triangle bounded by you can see here I am showing you the clear anatomy of the triangle do not get confused in exam it is bounded above by liver medially by common hepatic duct laterally by gallbladder and cystic duct this triangle is known as hepatocystic triangle hepatocystic triangle bounded by liver common hepatic duct gallbladder with cystic duct okay this is very important you should not get confused in this and now comes this is the right hepatic artery going like this this is left hepatic artery from right hepatic artery there is a branch coming to the gallbladder this is cystic artery now you can see there is a triangle shown here this is one triangle bounded by cystic artery common hep hepatic duct and gallbladder with cystic duct what is this triangle known as this is known as Kellogg's triangle so there is many a place there is a confusion between Kellogg's triangle and hepatocystic triangle. So please remember hepatocystic triangle is a very big triangle. Kellogg's triangle is a very small triangle sitting within the hepatocystic triangle bounded by cystic artery, common hepatic duct, gallbladder with cystic duct. And the content of this Kellogg's triangle is Kellogg's node. That node is known as Lund node. The Kellogg's node is Lund node which is seen in the Kellogg's triangle. Okay, please don't forget this very important for your exams so this is a Kellogg's node and now I am going to show you an interesting variation if you see sometimes what happens the right hepatic artery which is coming from this common hepatic artery may sometimes run into the Kellogg's triangle like this and give the cystic artery branch like this and this is normal left hepatic artery this abnormal course of right hepatic artery is known as Moyni hans hum please don't forget this abnormal course of right hepatic artery is known as Moyni hans hump or caterpillar turn. This is a repeat repeat image based question in FMG exam. So you can get in national board exams. Please remember caterpillar turn. Moyni hans hump or caterpillar turn is an abnormal tortuous course of right hepatic artery. And when you are doing lap laparoscopic cholecystectomy, you will ligate this right hepatic artery thinking as a cystic artery and it will cause torrential bleed please remember it will cause torrential bleed that is a problem with this Moynihan's hump or caterpillar turn please don't forget this anomaly in gallbladder 
another anomaly in uh, in the biliary system another anomaly i want you to remember here is this is anomaly of gallbladder this anomaly in the gallbladder is the most common anomaly what is this what is this anomaly in which the fundus of gallbladder folded upon itself is known as phrygian cap anomaly phrygian cap anomaly i would like to tell you some more important mcqs from this anatomy anatomy related areas one of the important anatomy i want you to remember is the bile duct coming down like this and this is pancreatic duct which is joining with the common bile duct and they open into the ampulla this is ampulla and ampulla is guarded by sphincter of od this is sphincter of od made up of four sphincters this is sphincter ampullae sphincter ampullae this is sphincter pancreaticus this is superior cholecal inferior cholecal superior cholecal inferior cholecal two sphincters so the sphincter of od is made up of totally four sphincters please don't forget sphincter of od is made up of four sphincters and it is always closed please don't forget it is always closed it is always closed it is opened by only one fellow only one fellow opens this sphincter of od and lets the bile and pancreatic juice inside that fellow is cck opens sphincter of od the function of cold histokinin is after eating a fatty food cold histokinin is stimulated that will contract the gallbladder and it will relax the sphincter of od it relaxes the sphincter of od so in cases of some pathologies we are going to discuss later some like some cbd stone or if you want to put a stent in the cbd like this if you want to put a stent in the cbd like this in those cases i have to do one procedure i have to go and cut open the sphincter of od that procedure is known as sphincter otomy that procedure is known as sphincter otomy so i'll go and cut the sphincter that procedure is known as sphincter otomy and this is usually achieved by means of uh, investigation ercp endoscopic retrograde cholangio pancreatography i will pass a endoscope into the duodenum like this and this endoscope will have side channels side channels it will not have a channel in the front it will have a side channel this is known as side viewing scopy svs scopy with this i will cannulate the ampulla i will push contrast inside it this procedure is known as ercp i will push contrast inside it this procedure is known as ercp initially it was used as a diagnostic procedure in those days but it is now no more used as a diagnostic procedure it is now only used as a therapeutic procedure ercp is nowadays mostly used as therapeutic procedure to do the following things number 1 sphincterotomy to do what are the procedures done sphincterotomy stone removal from cbd cbd stone removal stenting in the cbd or pancreatic duct for doing a stenting we do this very rarely we sometimes use ercp to take biopsy but that is not a compulsory so therapeutic is the most important sphincterotomy cbd stone stone removal stenting sphincterotomy has been helpful for many issues like sphincter of od dyskinesia sphincter of od dyskinesia is a disease in which the gallbladder contracts but the sphincter of od does not open that disease is known as sphincter of od dyskinesia for them the treatment of choice is sphincterotomy and after doing sphincterotomy we will remove the stones by means of dormia basket all those things can be done with the help of ercp so ercp the repeat repeat mcq is it is an invasive procedure what is the most common complication of ercp please remember ercp is an invasive procedure has enormous complication the most common complication 5% cases will develop ercp induced acute pancreatitis ercp induced acute pancreatitis it can also cause other complications like bleeding duodenal perforation duodenal perforation can happen bleeding can happen and it can even cause around 0.1 to 0.5% of the patients can even die of cholangitis the patients can develop cholangitis all these are various complications of ercp so because of cholangitis around 0.1 to 0.5% may die following an ercp developing cholangitis so please don't forget these are the points i want you to know in ercp ercp related to sphincter of od is a very important mcq for your exams